Hi there folks, it's a rainy drippy day here in Kentucky and we're going to shoot a quick little video on the, the way a throttle system works on a BCS tractor. Let me pan around here. I'm shooting this video all by myself so it's uh, not my usual deal where I've got a camera person because we're actually closed today. Anyway, here's a BCS walk behind tractor equipped with a Honda GX series engine. Um, this is the engine that's on most of the BCS machines that have been sold for the last so oh, 15 or so years. Um, this is, happens to be an 853 with a 13 horse Honda on it, but all the Honda throttle systems are set up the same. So, of course, up here on the handlebars, you've got the throttle control lever that you move to, you know, increase and decrease the speed of the engine, this being increased and this being decreased on a BCS. This lever is connected via this cable, which runs down the handlebars loops around back here and goes under the engine and kind of makes this loop in the front comes back in right here so this is the the inner part of the cable right here that i'm touching with my finger this is the outer part of the cable we call this part the sheath the outer part of the cable the black part is the sheath and this is the inner cable here so the sheath, as you can see, ends right here under this clamp. Uh, sometimes on older models, there'll be a, like a hollow bolt put under this clamp that uh, serves as the termination point for the sheath. That is, the hollow bolt is fixed under this clamp, and the sheath kind of just plugs into the, into the end of that hollow bolt from down here. Um, Anyway, the inner part of the cable continues on and attaches to the throttle lever of the engine. This, all these GX series Hondas are equipped with an engine throttle lever that's right here. This is what comes from the factory on the Honda engine. Uh, and it, this lever, here, let me pull the air cleaner out of the way just so we can see a little better here. Get this thing spun off of here. We'll just open up our viewing platform. Okay, that's much better. So now we can see the full engine throttle lever assembly right here, and we can see how this cable is attached. Now, what you can't see very well right now, sorry for the moving camera here, I'm trying to do this one-handed, um, but if I pull this up, you can see that right up here, there's a spring attached to, the, to that throttle lever on the engine. The spring is pulling the lever back toward the idle position. So you see, I can move this with my finger, overriding the cable, and then the spring pulls it back. So the spring is pulling it back to idle. The cable pulls it just the same way my finger would pull it here. It pulls it this way, which increases the speed. So um, it's, I can't reach up to the handlebar now, but if I, if I had long enough arms, I could reach up to the handlebar and accelerate that throttle lever, and you would see the cable pull this end of the thing. That is, the cable would move this way and it would pull this whole lever to increase the speed of the engine. So that's the way the system works. It's very simple. Now, what happens often is that your throttle cable will break. Uh, they get rusty, they get old, whatever, and your throttle cable just breaks. And at that point, your engine just wants to idle all the time because this spring right here that's, that we can see hidden under the muffler, the spring has pulled it back to idle and there's no cable to pull it up anymore. Well, this is a pretty th easy thing to override if you know how to do it. The pivot point of this lever, which is right here, the pivot point is a st threaded stud with a lock nut on top. When these engines are shipped from the factory in normal, I'm gonna roll this thing back in because the camera's getting all wet here. Anyway, the, um, that's continuing to rain. The, uh, when these things are shipped from the factory, normally there's not a cable hook to them. That is, if you buy just a typical Honda replacement engine for a pump or a generator or something like this, they don't have a throttle cable attached to them because they don't have a set of handlebars that they need a throttle cable for. So what they do to adjust the speed of the engine is they simply have this nut tightened down a little bit, okay, so that this lever stays where you put it. Now look, it's overriding that spring now. It's actually staying where I put it. So that can be done any time that your throttle cable fails. If your throttle cable breaks and you don't have throttle control up in the handlebars anymore, all you have to do to be able to run the tractor is grab a 10 millimeter wrench or socket or spanner wrench. I've got one of these fancy T wrenches here, but you don't need that. You can just use a socket or a, or a regular open end wrench. 
tighten this thing down kind of snug so that when you put this thing in position it stays wherever you put it. Now of course it's not very convenient because you have to walk down to the engine to adjust the throttle but it's better than not being able to use your tractor. So until you get a new throttle cable, which we of course stock here at Earth Tools and are happy to send you one, until you receive that just tighten this nut down so this thing stays where you put it and you've now over, you've overridden the spring basically and you've just made it a manual throttle adjustment right on the engine. This being wide open, this being idle and uh, you know adjust it however you see fit for the job you're doing and you can go back to work. Then once you receive your new throttle cable what you'll do is thread the new cable down you know through the handlebars from the top end and make sure to loosen this clamp again before you install your new cable because that spring has to be pulling it back to the idle position. It should snap it back firmly like that. So then you thread your new cable through the clamp. This is kind of a clamp here. You have to, this one's got a uh, Phillips screwdriver in it, but uh, uh, that, that is, it takes a Phillips screwdriver to loosen the clamp screw. Some of these take an Allen head screw, some of them take a slotted screw. It just depends on what style clamp they use. Different, uh, at different time periods, they've used different things. Uh, for the, on the Grillo tractors, for example, which this whole procedure is the same on the Grillo tractors, uh, they use an Allen head bolt in this. And the, the hex, the uh, shape of the body itself of the clamp is a hex shape usually, so you can put a, a 10 millimeter wrench on that to hold it in position. Uh, but anyway, what you would do is let the, you know, let that spring pull it back fully to the idle position, thread the new cable through, grab the protruding end of the cable which is barely visible down here under the muffler kind of hard to see down here but anyway the, the the end of the cable projects on through that clamp and you can grab the far end of it with a long nose pliers kind of down in here and pull it you pull all the slack out of it and then tighten the bolt on the top of the clamp to pinch the cable in place that should give you the proper adjustment uh, that concludes this segment thanks for watching